Hi everyone and welcome back to another art journal layout. Today I will be working on my Dilutions journal and I haven't played with my Dilutions paints for a while so today I thought it was time to grab them. Now I'm going to shake them, make sure that they are nicely shaked and I will apply the color using my cut and dry foam. So this is a pad that is uh, quite spongy on one um, side and on the other it is uh, quite thick so I'm going to cut out two pieces and I will be using those pieces to apply my paint there are so many different ways to apply acrylic paint on your pages and today I'm going to show you yet one more so you can apply your acrylic paint with a brush, with a baby wipe, with a blending tool and each and every way gives you totally different looks Today I'm going to use my cut and dry and you probably notice that I am using the back side, the black side, just because it is very hard and it doesn't absorb the paint. The white one is made to absorb that paint which is something that I don't want for this technique. So I'm using the back side, I'm applying a little bit each time. I'm adding a couple of dots and then blend them out. Notice that uh, just because this is quite hard it doesn't blend the colors as uh, nicely as it would with uh, a blending tool. And this is exactly the look that I am going for, that cloudy look and feel. This is a very quick and easy technique as you can see. It gives great results but the only thing you need to keep in mind is the color wheel theory. Make sure that uh, you use colors that they will not uh, turn into mud on your page and um, if you use colors that uh, they go well together then you can uh, throw in way more than two. Notice that I add only a dot of acrylic paint each time on my sponge and then blend it around and that's because it's always easier to build up layers rather than uh, remove uh, paint if you apply it too much from the beginning. Now I'm going to show you what will happen if I use the white um, area from this sponge and you will see that uh, it is super blended as you can see which is not the look that I am going for today. So I quickly switched to the dark side. And I repeated the exact same technique on the other page. Now to add some depth on my background I'm going to do some stenciling. This time I'm using the white area of uh, my foam there. So I'm going to add uh, some um, color here and there. Notice that uh, I will use only the two colors, the two acrylic paints that I used on my background. I will not introduce a third color and that's just because I want to keep my background quite subtle. I always like to add focal points on uh, my pages and I want them to be the focus of uh, my page. That's why I always like to have something going on at the background but at the same time not steal the thunder of my focal points. Now I'm going to add some splashes that I always love. Again I'm going to use only the two colors that I introduced on my background and uh, I have just diluted uh, the color with water so that I can easily create my splashes. Now I'm going to do some stamping with this awesome stamp. This is a 6x6 stamp by Stampendus that has just been released. You will find it in the links down below and by the way this is on sale today so check them out. Now instead of using uh, the normal ink pads for stamping I will be using my acrylic paint and the exact same colors. So this technique allows me to work with the same colors as my background. So actually I'm adding texture and depth at the same time. Notice that I apply the ink on my craft mat and then I am thinning it down, I'm working it with my brayer and then with the brayer I apply the paint on my rubber stamp. This way I have only a very thin layer on my rubber stamp which is going to make it super easy later on to clean my stamp. Now if you are wondering, I'm working on a glass mat. I have uh, done a review on this glass mat. This is by Tonic Studios and um, it is not uh, available yet. I think it has been sold out everywhere, but uh, they are going to release it again. They will restock and they also have the black uh, version which is by Tim Holtz. Now the black version actually has inches while the white one that I am currently working on has uh, centimeters and um, there is a review on this glass mat. Make sure to look for it on my channel. Now you can see that with a baby wipe it is super easy to clean my stamp. I am not going to fuzz a lot about it. After all, I only use it for my art journal, so this is good enough for me. You can go ahead and wash it on your sink if you want to. 
So this is my background and how it's looking at the moment. I really love everything that is going on there. And I like how vibrant it is. So uh, the final step for my background is to add some splashes of uh, white. This is white gesso that I am diluting it with water. This is something I do on pretty much all my art journals. I just love the look and I know that it's going to look uh, beautiful at the end when I will be using my gel pen to add highlights here and there like I always do. Now for my focal points I'm going to use these cone flowers. These are from a set by Stampendus and uh, I'm going to use all the flowers from the set. There are three different sizes. I am stamping them with Black Archival Ink on mixed media paper by Ranger. And at this stage you can stamp your focal points, you can color them with your favorite medium, cut them out and stick them on your background. Uh, in this case I am going to use my big brush markers, since it's a technique that I go back to again and again and I absolutely love. So I'm stamping the three flowers, I'm stamping a couple of leaves and uh, I'm also going to add a little bird in my layout. So this is the Hummingbird Bloom by Stampedus again. This is a lovely stamp set on its own that you can use for a card. But uh, in this case I'm only going to stamp the bird which I'm going to cut it out and use it on my layout later on. Now I do have dyes to cut out all those uh, flowers and the leaves and these dyes by Stampedus actually cut out the images without leaving a border which I absolutely love especially when it comes for art journaling. I am going to run this through my Big Shot machine to cut them out and I'm going to show you that there are no borders around those flowers. I hope you can see that. Now I am going to cut out uh, the bird and uh, I don't have a die for the bird so I'm going to use my good old uh, scissors there. And now that I have all my elements cut out I can decide where everything is going to go and then stick them down with my matte medium. I always like to stick my focal points on top of my pages and then color them but you can definitely color each and every image and then stick it down and uh, put everything together. Now just because I am going to use my big brush markers to do my favorite technique and color them and do the shading and everything, I am going to co cover everything with matte medium as well which is going to provide a non-porous surface so that the ink doesn't dry instantly on top of my paper and it gives me a few seconds to move it and smudge it with my finger. Now I'm going to give stems on my leaves and my flowers and uh, for that I'm using a black thin marker. If you don't feel confident drawing on top of your uh, art journal with a black marker then just use your pencil Draw your stems and once you are happy with them, just go over them with your black marker. I like my flowers to look quite whimsical, so that's why I don't give them a straight uh, stem. I rather uh, give them um, a little bit of a curve and a wavy look and um, the stems are uh, thinner or uh, thicker in different areas. Now I'm going to use a brass marker and I'm going to draw a border around my uh, layout. I just like to have borders or darker edges. I like to frame my art somehow. I just like the look. So I'm going to draw that and then I'm going to let those stems look as if they are coming from the border. And I'm also going to draw some lines around the border and all over the stems. And then I'm going to color them black and white. So this is going to give a very whimsical look on my page, kind of a Dr. Seuss inspired uh, flower. I will do the last stem there and then I will go ahead and start uh, coloring inside those uh, little areas. Now I'm not going to torture you and let you see how I colored each and every one of those uh, boxes with black and white. I'm just going to let you know that this is a Faber-Castell brass marker and uh, for the white areas I use my white Posca pens. And you will find links down below just like always. And here is how my layout is looking at the moment. So it's time now to add some color on the flowers and the bird. Now if you are uh, new to my channel, these are my big brass markers that I absolutely adore, I use them again and again. Uh, these are by Faber-Castell and they have Indian ink inside, which means that it dries permanent, it doesn't smudge or smear once it's dry. 
So I'm going to use this to color everything and just because I'm working on a non-porous surface I do have the ability to smudge it with my finger before it dries. But remember once it dries it's not going to smudge or smear or do anything else. Now I am uh, going to apply the first layer of color and then with a darker marker I'm going to do some shading. If you find that while you do the shading with a darker marker you move with your finger the color underneath the first layer then make sure that you heat it uh, quickly with your heat, uh, heat gun and this is going to set the ink underneath so you can do the technique on top. Now I'm moving to the center of my flower and I will let you see the whole uh, coloring process and as I'm doing that I can uh, answer one of the most common questions that I get about my big brush markers here. These are actually called artist pens by Faber Castell and they are marked with PIT. Now these markers come in different sizes and in different barrels and nibs. So the ones I'm using are the big brush markers because they have the bigger um, tip as well as the bigger barrel so it holds more ink inside but you can find them in diff with different nibs all the way to super fine and uh, they all work the same way you can do the same uh, techniques with any one of them I personally prefer the big brass markers just because they have a bigger nib and uh, I like to add more ink on my page with just one brush stroke I also love them just because they are permanent so they will not smudge or smear once they are dry and one last thing that I love about them is that they are translucent so you can see that they don't cover up the black lines of my stamp. Now I finish with all the coloring that I did with my markers and I will move on and use my white gel pen and add some highlights on pretty much all the elements, the flowers, the bird and even the leaves. I move quickly, I don't pay attention in uh, making perfect lines, I like them to be sketchy and I'm not uh, adding them all around the cutouts, just uh, in uh, different areas here and there. And um, the truth is that I don't pay any attention or where my light source would be or anything. This is just a very sketchy looking art journal so nothing has to be perfect. Now my quote comes from this paper artsy stamp set. It has uh, lovely flower quotes. Some of them are really fun and they are great for card making as well. You will find a link to that down below. So I went with uh, the quote that says flowers are little smiles that grow from the ground. I'm also going to use my white gel pen and add some highlights around those uh, letters. And my art general for today is ready. I hope you had fun, you got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you all next week. Have a great weekend!